Testing. One, two, three. You're listening to Rock Street Radio, where the musicians tell it like it is, right here, right now, on Rock Street Radio. Hi, this is Jack Kovic over at Rock Street Radio. I've got a couple of guests here tonight. I've got Greg Douglas and I've got Anthony Collins. And um, they just, uh, well, Greg just finished the gig downstairs at the 395. And uh, Anthony has got some gigs coming up. And uh, so how's it going today, guys? Uh, I'll take that one first. I, I, we just got done with a great gig downstairs. Uh, every time we play here, the crowd gets a little bigger. You know, the tips get a little bigger, the waitresses get happier, the band gets happier, our tips get bigger. You know, life is great. You know? I really, I, I enjoyed uh, the show, um, and actually I videotaped some of it, so it's going to be at the end of this podcast, a couple of those wild shots there. You know, I kind of think of guitar playing as golf, you know? Yes. <laughs> like, you, know, you, you, you know, you get like a couple of good shots in there, and uh, you got to just record that, you know? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm great from 10 feet out, you know, my, my, you know my, my drive isn't too good, but right, uh, I'm, right. a, I'm a good putter. Yeah, yeah, it, well, it's all about the follow-through. Yeah. You know, yes. yeah, and, uh, yeah, the putter, right? Uh, so, Greg, is there something coming out? Uh, I think I saw people passing out uh, a new record, is that right? Yeah, well, actually, I, I got together with an old friend of mine, Michael Muldoon, and I, I, I uh, about 10 years ago, I put out kind of a vanity album that was all guitar instrumentals you know acoustic stuff I was going to do another one but then I started co-writing all these really cool tunes and I put together a band it was uh, Larry Grano on drums um, and a guy named James East on bass who uh, Anthony and I both know fine mm. bass player and uh, we had Aunt, uh, Michael singing and also a guy named Gregory Douglas yeah. No relation to me. Really? 35-year-old guy. That's who, strange. He, yep, <laughs> yeah, it is very strange. You know, we met each other because yeah. he, he's one of the uh, the leading lights in the gay singer-songwriter uh-huh. movement. Yeah. And we started getting each other's uh, fan mail. Yeah. I mean, I'd get this fan mail that was, you know, man, I think you are smoking <laughs> hot. Si- signed, Bob. And I'm going, man, what's wrong with this picture? So finally... Uh, the kid came in. He's 35 years old. He just killed it, man. So it's it's on the CD. The CD is called Greg Douglas and the Accomplices. Really? And how long ago was that? Uh, it just came out two weeks ago. That's the one they were handing out downstairs? That's the one they were handing and out. And that's got James East as bass on there? It sure does. Wow, that's wild. Yeah, get it on CD Baby, uh, iTunes. My website, anywhere where fine music is sold. You know, I want to admit, uh, my real name is Greg Douglas. Your real name is, well, there yeah. you go. There's another one that really confuses another Greg, things. Yeah. Oh, that's really uh, spectacular. That's wild. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been great, man. I'm very proud of the project. I'm very proud of my band that you just heard downstairs. It has nothing to do with that particular project, though. No, right. no. Different yeah. project altogether. Uh, you know, no less, no less wonderful. Uh, the, the the new CD led to me actually my, my publicist was talking to Steve Miller's manager and Steve Miller's manager said um, what's that music playing in the background and uh, the my, my publicist said well that's Greg Douglas's new CD so all of a sudden they started making phone calls ten minutes later I got a phone call that said how would you like to open up for Steve Miller on October 8th. This year. This last, year. In, coming yeah, up. This yeah. year in Sonoma. So that's happening. That's happening. I'll be sitting in with Steve. All um, right. Now, hold on. Uh, so we've got October 8th. Yes. And uh, where? Sonoma. The uh, Sonoma Music Festival. Tickets to the public go on sale on June 1st. We could find that just by searching Sonoma Music Festival. So it's, it's on there right now. Wonderful. Yep. That's going to be a great show. Uh, we got to get out there and do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Will And will the original bands, the, the, the members, uh, be playing? They will be playing. Well, the guys who play with Steve on a regular basis will be playing. 
So yeah. Right, right. No, I mean um, yeah, the guys in your band. No, they they want it's it's I, actually I'm going to be using the guys that I used on on the, on the recording project, which yeah. You know, so th- for example, E still be on at that show. Right, and you know it does doesn't reflect on my band. I I feel like I have the best musicians in the world. It's just uh, you know these guys are on the project. I think I owe it to them, and that and that's you know that's what Steve and those guys want to hear. They want to hear what was on the CD. Great. And um, tell me a little bit about the folks that you were working with today. Um, well, I've been uh, work, working with a guy named Ken Rexroad and uh, doing a thing called the Six String Society. That's where I met Anthony. And uh, No, even before that. Oh, no. I mean, that? That's right. Yeah, that's I, right. I met Anthony. Uh, Probably like a few ye- a year before that, it's, 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 tell tell him the story, man, about how how I, I talked down to you. Remember, remember that, man? I was just saying, no, Anthony, you have to do this and you have to do that. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Well, like, so what was it? There, you're doing like a jam at the uh, old Valley Fort in Fallbrook. Yes. So I showed up and I didn't know who you were, or, but you were playing with the uh, some local guys, and then yeah, I remember you when I went up there. You're like. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do one, four, five, and A. The chords are A, and I was like, oh, okay, and I, and I just faked it off, and I was like pretending like, oh, okay, what? And I was like, what chord is that again? You're like, that's D, and I was like, oh, okay, and then you're like, okay, solo, and I was like, are you sure? And you're like, yeah, and then I just did my thing, and then the second song, I called out the key and everything, and then you're you're laughing. That's right, and you know, I, and you know, so I, I didn't have much to say on the second song. I, said, I think this kid knows what he's doing. You said you needed more coffee. Yeah, I. <laughs> and I think I got it. So, no, uh, Anthony and I uh, have 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 had a, uh, we've had we've had a lot of fun, man. I and I'm not a big fan of prodigies. And uh, Anthony, uh, you know, I, I'm always getting these videos of these 12 year old kids, best guitar player in the world. And then I saw Anthony walk up, and I said, Ah, here's my worst nightmare. He's not only a fabulous player, he's a great guy, man. He's a great hang. So And he looks the part. And he looks the part, <laughs> man. Yeah, he does. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I I like a lot of the the pictures that have been coming out as well, you know. And uh well, you know, Anthony's not afraid to take some risque poses as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> now whose idea was was that? Some of these poses. That, Mine. Yeah, that's you, right? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna go far then, right? Nobody's coaching you, you're just coming up with that stuff. Yeah. That's natural, right? Uh now, so uh Anthony, can you list on on a couple of hands here some of the people you've worked with? Uh who's influenced you over the last couple of years? So who who I mean, have I worked with? You've been with? playing some with some pretty big folks. All right. right, not to mention Greg Douglas. Yeah, so Greg Douglas, uh, like you said, James East. I was supposed to uh, book him for some stuff, but he couldn't do the dates. Ah. Uh. Um. Stevie Solis, uh, Ron Blair from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, the bass player. Um. Daryl Mansfield. And I know there's more. I just can't think of them. And right you're now. 15. Ronnie yeah. Lee. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Ronnie Lee Ronnie from Lee. the the Runaways. Oh, very yeah. nice. Oh, Ronnie Lee, right? Yeah, she the, she the worked. She worked guitar. with them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's a wonderful. Have you heard her? I, ju- I just saw her the other night. Wow. I was, I was hanging with her at a club. Is she just not a yeah. big wow? Well, when you did you see her play though? I've seen her play yeah, before. Yeah. She's yeah, fabulous. I just, yeah. I just love that stuff. Yeah. Uh, wow. So, and uh, where are you playing next, there, Anthony? June 4th at the uh, Del Mar Fair um, from 3.30 till 5 p.m. at the Coors Light stage. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And um, I think you recently put out a, uh, a recording, right? Yeah, four-song EP. Four-song. How's that doing? Pretty good. Good? Yeah. Good? Getting the marketing out there? Yeah. It, it's doing better than I thought it would. I'd like to see a 10-song EP out there. Oh, yeah. No, we're going back in the studio this summer. Are they all originals? Yes, sir. Are you willing to do some covers? Nope. Zero, not not right? on a CD, nope. Eh, you know. I mean, a lot of bands, think about Van Halen and a couple of good covers. They did that yeah, very but, well, right? Nah, I'm writing. All original, right? Yes. 100%. Yep. Yeah. So who are you, uh, I mean, if I was going to ask you your top 10 question... Uh, you know what? What is it? What is it that you want everybody to know? So on um, 
June 11, 11th, um, we're doing this charity event at the Moose Lodge in Oceanside for uh, Scott Chandler. Chandler. He yeah, uh, he's the guy that does the uh, surf report on 105.3. Oh, great, great. Are you going to get on 105? Uh, it's in the process. Maybe some of the originals, right? Mm, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. So he has a cancer in his bones. Mm-hmm. Oof. And it's just manageable. There's no cure for it. Right. He can't get any right. bone marrow uh, transplant, nothing. nothing. Yeah, he's got to write it out. So yeah. we're doing a charity for him at the Moose Lodge. Uh, my band's headlining the event, and it's uh, it's just raising awareness about, you know, what he has. So, you know, Greg, um, you know, we know you played with the Steve Miller Band, but mm-hmm. I'm sure there was so many other bands that you played with. Well, it goes back to uh, the first guy I actually toured with that I actually got on a plane with was Van Morrison. And uh, Van uh, was working with a, a, a band called uh, Soundhole that later became Huey Lewis in the News. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, um, and everybody told me, you know, Van's a real strange guy. He's a jerk. He's terrible to work with, and, and he's going to fire you. And the first thing I did was I walked up and I told him a really horrible, distasteful joke that was just... <laughs> What was that joke? I can't tell it on the radio. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, you're a funny guy. <laughs> everybody was terrified of him. So he called me up that night. We went out to dinner and we had a great time. And it was I started hanging with him. You know, I went, went over to his house, gave him some guitar lessons. And, uh, you know. I started wondering about my mental health because I was getting along so well with the, guy. <laughs> with the bad guy. So Van Morrison. Van Morrison. You were yeah. giving him guitar lessons. I was giving him a guitar lesson, and all I did was confuse him. I said, "Dude, <laughs> you know five chords. You're you're doing just fine. You're writing yeah. you're writing fine with five chords." Is it true that still to today you give guitar lessons? I am very picky about who I teach. I used to teach eighty people a week. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it drove me completely insane. So now I do have some students. They're very, very good people, and they're very motivated. You know. Yeah, about 10. Uh, about 10, exactly. About yeah, 10 ten's people. A, ten's a good number. Yeah, at ten, this ten, point. Yeah. yeah, it's a good, good number. You're not looking to make money. You're looking to just, no. just but, be with the right people. You know, as far as other people I've worked with, man, I, wor- I worked with Bo Diddley. I worked with uh, I worked for a long time with with Paul Butterfield. Um, I worked with uh, with John Lee Hooker. Oh God, it goes on and on. I worked with the Greg Kinn Band. Big, oh yeah, big hit. Uh, the big one hit they had. Yeah, yes, our loves our loves <laughs> in jeopardy. Oh, that? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. There's the other hit from that yeah. I like from that. Yeah, the, the, uh, the breakup song. Breakup song. Love it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Uh, you guys I, should play that next time. No, uh, actually, Jeopardy was the one that was that made the bigger all the hit. money. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you know Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, yeah, co- he covered made it. he made yeah. that fun of it. But but the breakup song, I just love the lyrics and the way well, it sounds. Uh 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 uh. Yeah, I just love it. You can't go wrong with. You know, you know so, sometimes less is more, right? That's right. Like, you know, just just make it goofy and funny and. Uh, yeah, make a part. Uh, was there anything with uh, I'm trying to think. A hot tuna or anything? Hot, I how could I forget hot tuna? I was an ex- kind of an experiment that failed with hot tuna. <laughs> uh, I, I was brought into the band for about a year, and uh, you know we we had a great time, but there there was some internal machinations that were going on that didn't that made, just made it so it didn't work. Sounds like the Eagles. Uh, yeah, it's like the <laughs> uh, it's like the Eagles, except worse. Except worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, it was it was it was a great education. Yorma is a great finger picker, um, and I learned a lot from working with the band. So uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's been it's been an amazing career, man. I worked I worked with uh, Peter Rowan, who's a bluegrass guy. Dave Pramal, who is one of the uh, the top uh, mantra mantra music singers, you know, doing meditation music. So right, it goes on and on, man. Yeah. Uh, so sitting right, you know, next to Anthony, I mean, it feels like you know, maybe he might travel a similar path, right? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, we're looking at probably someone who's gonna, 
reach a high potential, right? Well, he certainly, I mean, as far as, I mean, when I was 15, I was, uh, you know, nowhere near the level that, that Anthony is. And uh, so I, I think his future is, is going to be very interesting. Yeah. And I think he's making some good decisions. What's our advice? Uh, well, my advice is not to do as many drugs as I did, <laughs> uh, for one, number one. And uh, the, the, the other advice is just, uh, you know, uh, don't believe your reviews. You know? I mean, the good ones or the bad ones. Like, I, I, I look at them, and then I'll think about it for a minute, and then that's it, you know? Yeah. 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 I haven't seen a bad review yet. Have there been any? Where it, like there's there's just a few where it's like good and bad, but they even they even each other oh, out okay. there. Yeah, so. yeah, but nobody's really slammed you. No, anything. no, not yet. Yeah, it's usually like okay, Anthony is uh, you know in jail now for causing a ruckus. <laughs> you know, you don't want right. to get any of that stuff. You know, keep it right. keep it nice. You know, or you get some ex girlfriend who you know turns out to be a newspaper reviewer. Only <laughs> <laughs> give your face, <laughs> just slam you. Right? <laughs> So, uh, Anthony, what do we got? Uh, we're thinking about playing it cool for the next year or two, or, or you know, are you going to jump right into uh, a big circuit? I mean, I see you jumping, doing a world tour, but then I'm, I'm thinking about the movie La Bamba, you know, where everybody's just, you know, a little bit stressed out from <laughs> making the fame too quick, you know? So it, it seems to me like maybe you're just going to ease your way well, into like the, the fame. Well, like the first two weeks of summer... It- it's pretty like bam, 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 and then yeah, and then it like cools down for like about a week or two, and then you know this summer is like pretty much like everything's already figured out. It's yeah. pretty busy. Yeah. yeah, I got a busy summer, right? Something yeah. happening every week, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, do you think we're gonna take that to a further degree, or are you gonna wait until you graduate from high school? Well, you you just just wait, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe like have a tutor. With you while you well, travel like, no, the not world? Th- not th- I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to rush into anything unless, like, you know, something, the right the right thing comes along, you know? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're going to, uh, who are you hanging with right now? Who's your main uh, band? Well, right now it's uh, Dwayne Hawthorne on the drums and uh, Bruce Borden on bass, but a lot of times, like, it's not really just those two it's always like different different people right. di- whoever's on bass or drums but it's the caliber of the the rhythm section is always pretty pretty high very high it's yeah. never, Who, who's on the album uh Dwayne Bruce and Paul Alvarado on rhythm guitar oh very good yeah, yeah. John yeah. Bart on keys. and oh yeah John Bart on the keys, keys. Yeah. yeah I don't always see keys at your gigs no only one only a few times I'm gonna and that's on the album I'm gonna have to play some of that on this uh on this at the end of the recording or sometimes some of that. at uh, some shows we'll have a percussionist mm-hmm. with the timbales mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff yeah so I mean a, a busy schedule this summer can you name some of the shows you're gonna do so like I said the uh, Del Mar Fair right um, the Moose Lodge um, oh yeah we're doing the Rock and Roll Marathon the, the day right after the Del Mar Fair and there's just like a bunch of other stuff. Right, right. Like right, right now in the process. Palma right. Mesa. Oh, you're playing the Palo Mesa? Yeah, again. Locally. Yeah. Uh, what date do you know on August the Palo Mesa? 20th, August 20th, Palo Mesa. August 20th at the Palo Mesa. Very good. I'd like to see you guys maybe get together as a combo show here coming up, right? Uh, I think that that could, uh, that could probably very well be arranged because, uh, you know, we. We we've cut heads a few times on stage, or man. even just I hanging like out at your house too, yeah. messing around. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, we uh, we we do well together. It, it was it was funny the last time I played with him, he was you know doing doing these moves, you know, like putting his guitar behind his legs. Yeah, exactly. He, and he got to the guitar behind the leg thing, and I said. You know what? If I do that, I'm gonna end up in the <laughs> hospital. So I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna put the guitar behind my head and, and stick with that old. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Was, but it, it was funny. Man. Now I had a friend who used to ride the guitar like a surfboard. That's uh, you know, something you might end up. You know, it looks good in that song. You play a little slide and and uh, riding the guitar like a surfboard. <laughs> you know, you got the wow. head, you got the head of the guitar off the stage and okay. you're just, just riding it you know like that and then maybe set it on fire 
Um, <laughs> that always works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, uh, okay. That, 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 that's good career advice. Yeah, I like yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, I'm always trying to uh, get a good point out there. Uh, some people will smash the guitars, you know, and I never really got that too much, you know. So, mm. uh, What are you playing now, Anthony? What's your guitar of choice? Oh, I don't know. It's you like, got that weird uh, upside down um, strat or something. Yeah, and right? then also um, a Gibson Modern. Uh huh. Yeah, and it's always changing. You got a Les Paul? Yeah. Still got the Paul. Uh, what yeah, about the, a, You got a Firebird? Yeah, the gold Firebird, yeah. Right? I or think the, I saw, uh, was it a, uh, a Paul Reed Smith today? For That was my Paul Reed Smith. I played one about 17 years ago. Mine got, my first one got stolen in Italy when I was on tour with Big Brother and the Holding Company. Right. And I immediately came back and bought another one. I play that. I play a Taylor guitar, uh, 314 CE Taylor. I, I, electric? Uh, electric acoustic. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, I'm endor- I endorse both guitars. And I also have a Fender Telecaster that I use for slide. Yeah, the Tele looks good. Yeah. I also yeah. got that. That uh, uh, I got that gold Paul Reed Smith. Yes, you did. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> yeah. That's a bad guitar. <laughs> now that's a Paul Reed Smith there, but it's an odd one. It does not have the typical headstock of a Paul Reed Smith. If no. you notice, uh, it, it's the Santana version. Ah, they only made a hundred of them. Wow, it's an odd kind of guitar. I hate it though because you can't adjust at the bottom. You can't adjust the. Um, uh, the bridge, the, uh, yeah. the intonation. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. weird, yeah. It's kind of a weird guitar. Yeah, they only made uh, just a hundred of those. Got the mirror with with the Santana headstock on it. Kind of weird. I got it at uh, where's that place? It was uh, Buffalo Brother. You remember them? I do. Yeah, I miss them. And they had that great deal where you could just bring your guitar back again and again and again. Yep. And then what happened? They always had good stuff in there. They had great I stuff, swear, like, cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then that deal just kind of disappeared. They said, well, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah, well, yeah. The, whole thing, the whole thing disappeared. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not there yeah. anymore. Yeah. So what about uh, Steve Miller Tribute Band? Anything like that coming up? Well, now that you mentioned it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a, a group that came from Canada called Daring Greatly, uh, who are on the uh, on the cover of Boogie Magazine. Um it was suggested to me by one of the local bookers that he said, why don't you form a Steve Miller tribute band? You know, and I said, well, I can't find anybody that can sing the stuff. Mm. And those guys are great. Uh, they're unbelievable singers. So we got together. We put together a band called The Pompatus of Love. Yeah. And <laughs> we did a gig that just... We got five encores. We, yeah, really? We, we could not get off the stage. We had no material left. <laughs> and then we did another another gig. Same thing. Encore after encore. They're going on tour for a couple months in Canada, but uh, we are, with, with the help of Kenneth Rexroad, looking for some shows, uh, hopefully some, you know, some big casino shows, that kind of thing. I see it in the casino. Oh, it's yeah, oh, it's yeah. fantastic. I just saw the uh, the animals over at the casino. Yeah, that was, and it was really the animals. Yeah. Well, they had one of the original animals. Right? <laughs> so if we got one of the original Steve Miller band, I think uh, that warrants the the really big shoe over there at the casino. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and Darren Greatly is the band. And Darren Greatly is the band with with me in it. You know, and as long as I can avoid the uh, the the curse of 2016 that seems to be killing every musician in the world. Uh, elaborate uh, on that a little bit, dude. What's I mean? What's going on? It's like all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, these sixty-seven year old people are dying. It's like you know, remember? You oh, to, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah I mean, it yeah. used to be you know, twenty-seven back in the day when yeah. people were over to you know, it's like you know, sixty-seven is is the new twenty-seven. The new twenty-seven. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm just. Are you worried? Or what? <laughs> Yeah, frankly. Uh, I'm 66. You look uh, like you're in good shape, though. Yeah, I, oh, I married a nutritionist. Oh, very so, good, very yeah, good. I was a smart Jerry. Guy. Jerry. Your wife, Jerry, is here? Yeah, Jerry, the nutritionist, the yeah. Nutritionist. Well, uh, you couldn't have... And by your shape there, you know, I, I, I think I should start visiting, uh, you know, 
Yeah. Are you taking on any new customers? I'm retired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. No, I'm you're lucky. in great shape. I mean, you still got your rock star figure. You're wonderful. You got the Steve Miller band coming up here, uh, and uh, I'm assuming some shows. Uh, and, you know, Ken Rexrod. Yeah. He'll get you at Las Vegas. Yeah, the man's an animal. Here. He's a really smart guy. Yeah, he uh, he'll is. get you the right shows. I'd like to see you know the local casinos and then go hit Vegas with the show. Yeah, I think it's going to be a slam dunk. You know, uh, what's uh, Steve doing these days? Steve is touring and touring and touring and touring. He, and you know, of course, he just got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Right. So I'm inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as well. And he was nice enough to thank me. Yes. Uh, on on television, which made me happy, and uh, I think he's just going to keep touring because yeah, you know yeah. who sells records anymore. You know, it's hard to do, man. Yeah, you got to uh, tour. Yeah. Now this is a good point, okay? And uh, yeah, we've got a young guy here who's starting out in the music business. How do you make money in the music business now? Uh, Anthony is, uh, I think, I I, w- I would think his future is going to be getting out in front of people. And just every time I've seen him, he's blown people out of the room. Right. Every single time. So I think that's where he's going to sell a lot of his stuff. He's going to sell a lot of his stuff live. Um, yeah. Maybe stay away from the big record company deal. I mean, is that a, a thing of the past? Uh, do you, you sell your own records on the internet now, right? I mean, yes, you do. I yeah. mean, that's where that's where the money is. Yeah. Right. Uh, you get your own. MP3 downloads, yeah. right? Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. I, Anthony, what, what the, I mean, you you probably are, are more up to date on this than I am, so maybe you can answer this question better. No, no. Well, like, like the only thing I, so I took a class in, at my school for music, and one of the things, the topics that we used to talk about every week is a new article. So and so gets sued, three point million dollars for fifteen seconds of. Of a of a certain riff or a certain uh, chord progression. Right. Wow. Go after the bi- the deep pocket. And so the or... thing is like that, and also you, you look into it and it's like the uh, okay, like the websites they're gonna screw you over like no matter what is what I I got out of all, out of all of it. So I talked to a lot of other musicians who are always popping out albums, you know, and one of them the guys I talked to, Gino Matteo, a guitar player, he said. You know you're gonna get screwed over anyway, so might as well just have your music out there. If it, if it's just gonna happen, at least you know get expo get 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 it out there at least. Yep. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Visibility. You know. Yeah. And hopefully, somehow you make some of the profits from you know. The story is just a, again and again and again that uh, people you know don't get the reward you know like they should and, well uh, yeah. i'm just you know i put my stuff on cd baby and cd baby puts it on itunes who puts it on amazon and puts it on everything else yeah and you know i'm selling um well i'm selling like maybe uh 30 to 50 copies a week right and you know but you see the profit from that. I do. I see just about every penny. You know, of profit. as opposed to when it's out in the radio station, right. and, and maybe uh, ASCAP send or uh, BMI sends you something, right? They throw right. A, they throw a dart at a uh, dartboard, and <laughs> if, if it lands on your name, you get money that week, right? Uh, That's basically how it works, right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the musician is a technologist these days who's in control of his income, right? If you if you know the internet, you can make money. Right. Uh, not as much as you used to be able to, but you can make money. Yeah. So. And at least ninety percent of it is not going to the band manager or the attorneys. Right. right. For the first time last year, vinyl outsold yeah, CD. I re- yeah, I read that. Yeah, that's that a was trip. Pretty man. gnarly. That is a trip. Um, you know, I um. I, here's an example of how the internet can work for you. I came out with one. I was talking about a vanity album back in 2000. It was finger picking, and you know, there's about you know 10 people out of every million that listen to finger picking guitar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I put you know I put this thing out and I saw nothing. You know I sold stuff at gigs and all of a sudden I started to get 
real checks. I mean, checks for like $800 a quarter, you know, $1,000 a quarter. And it was like, what's up with this? Is, is there a problem with the accounting? Or, um, it turns out Pandora has a Greg Douglas station. Yeah, uh, I've seen that. Yeah, which I didn't know about. People are hearing my song, and they're downloading my stuff. Right. And that's what makes all the difference. And now i got to get a new Pandora station for Greg Douglas and the accomplices. So. Mm-hmm. And we need to get Anthony. Anthony Pandora. on Pandora. So how did it just happen sort of serendipitously for you, right? You didn't... You didn't you know start this yourself right no so who in the great world decided there should be a greg douglas channel a place called the orchard who was doing the same thing the cd baby does but uh they just you know they gave my thing over to pandora and it was uh finger picking so right. I'm, I'm in there with leo kotke uh-huh. and, and tommy emmanuel and all these uh, these great finger awesome. style guys Right, and it's just you know it, it blew my mind. Somebody called me up one day and said, "Hey, you had your own radio station." I said, hey, "Get out of here! I'm not going to fall for that one again." <laughs> and uh, and it, it was cool. So yeah, and there's there is money to be made, but not like it used to be. And that's all the time we have today. Greg Douglas, Anthony Collins, thanks for coming out. Thank you, man. Thanks for having us. We'll be back next week with another edition of Rock Street Radio.